Hello fellow renegades, it's Jim McChop or James and today I will share with you the tips that will make you much more powerful when you're on exile. These tips are especially helpful if you are either a complete beginner or newish. Maybe you have 10, 15, up to 25 hours of gameplay under your belt but a lot of these things start, take a little bit of time to start to incorporate and realize their value. But these things, they will tremendously increase your survivability, your ability to move about the map better and essentially get the kind of items you want to begin really becoming more powerful. I have created timestamps, you can find those in the description so you can jump to any specific tip. So without further ado, let's get into it. First up, food items. Now, food items can be incredibly valuable. So valuable, in fact, that they can be responsible for a life or death experience in any engagement that you have. You can tremendously increase both your health and your shield capacity up to maximum of 200 HP and 150 health points. You will more often than not have the upper hand in the vast majority of engagements. This is so valuable. There are five food items all together and three of them are really, really amazing. The first one is the Shield Up Eel. Eat this so you can increase your shield. The same goes for the so-called health up cocktail. This will increase health. So the more of these you find and consume, the higher your shield and health capacity will go and the more survivability you will be able to enjoy. There is a third item and this one is incredibly valuable and that is the strange fruit. What this does is every 45 seconds it generates one of all available consumables. It just pops out of your backpack and you can go ahead and consume that. Which means over the course of your time on exile, every 45 seconds you could get a shield up eel or a health up cocktail or a haste pepper which looks like a mushroom and it'll increase your speed to maximum for 20 seconds without using stamina. These items are so valuable and they will Will play a significant role in giving you the amount of health and shield points to be very very tough and they will allow you to survive most engagements as long as you don't miss most of your shots <laughs> and that can happen to the best of us so don't worry but those are really really valuable keep a look out for those tip number two wooden huts Sometimes you're lucky and you find a cluster of them in a little village. Those could be two, three, sometimes even four huts. And the wonderful thing about these is they almost always contain at least one loot chest, which means weapons, potential mods, as well as ammo. And they are the most likely to have food item spawns. Shield up eels, you're most likely to find health up cocktails. And if you find a village and you break into each of these houses, you can get 30 shield points, 30 health points points in one pop just in 30 seconds going through those houses because the likelihood of finding one or even two of these items is very high. Tip number three, caravans. Ah, those damn caravans. I remember being very early on in my hawk journey and always avoiding these because they are massive six-legged giant lizard creatures with a load of disciples on top intent on killing you. They require a lot of ammo and damage to kill and at any moment you could simply be shot in the back by a enemy renegade, just not worth it, right? Wrong. They are incredibly valuable, especially if you've been able to upgrade to at least two blue weapons or even an epic, a purple weapon that does a significant amount of damage. If you manage to take those down, you are guaranteed one legendary shield mod which permanently increases your shield capacity by 40 points. You are guaranteed one artifact which you can otherwise only get from the temple after completing five puzzles and getting five glyphs. And you will get at least one epic, sometimes even legendary, trinket. Those are incredibly valuable when you extract them and sell them or dismantle them for one dirium. Up to three caravans can spawn and eliminating those is incredibly valuable. You can get a full inventory of one artifact and multiple trinkets from just killing one caravan, including a legendary mod. What you need to do is you need to shoot the crystals found on the caravan itself. There are two large chests on either side. You have to shoot first one, then the other to break them off. Then you will have three blue crystals on each side, which again, you have to shoot and break to completely dismantle the creature of its load and then be able to kill the creature itself. Once you've done that, all that just Juicy loot will be yours. So it can be a bit tricky at first, but sooner rather than later you will get the hang of it and going for a caravan will almost always be worth it. Number 4. Wanderium Deposits as you travel through exile, you will find crystalline structures, Wanderium, that you can actually mine to get 50 Wanderium per deposit. 
and there's one location specifically where you are guaranteed to find three in one go every single time. Now, the wonderful thing about this is you cannot lose the Wonderium you've mined from deposits on Exile. Unlike trinkets or artifacts that you might carry, as well as loot, when you're eliminated, you drop these and you lose these. However, for Wonderium, once you have mined that, it is yours to keep no matter what happens to you. Always worth looking out for, especially if you have the eye glyph, which lets you see treasures, including these deposits, with a yellow outline from a distance, so you always know where they are. Wonderium, of course, incredibly valuable and necessary for increasing your loyalty level, as well as your important artifacts. You really want to get as much Wonderium as possible, so it is always worth having a look out for those and going there. Number 5. Drones. Since the recent Venture 3 update, slight changes have been made to Exile. One of those changes is drones now fly about the place in certain locations carrying loot chests. If you shoot those down, you will almost guaranteed get one trinket and you have high chances of getting weapons or mods that can be really valuable. So it's always worth going for those. Tip number 6. Weapon types. You generally want to make sure that the two weapons you can carry do not use the same kind of ammo. Now there are three types of ammo. One is energy ammo, second is heavy and the third is generic or light ammo. Different kinds of weapons will use any of those three variations and you tend to want to focus on having two weapons of a different kind. Why? Well, of course, so you don't run out of ammo quickly and find yourself in a situation, like I have in the past, where you've run out of ammo and now you're pretty much dead meat if you are in the middle of an engagement. That is not a good situation to be in, so it is always good to have two different kinds. For instance, if you have a fully automatic assault rifle, then the second weapon, you don't want to have a submachine gun or another assault rifle because they tend to share the ammo pool and you'll run out much faster. So you want to maybe go for an energy weapon because that uses energy ammo which gives you double the ammo pool and makes you more likely not to run out. Now there can be situations where your secondary weapon which would have different ammo is worth replacing with a much stronger weapon you have found that shares the same ammo type as the other weapon you have equipped. In that case you do have to be more wary of replenishing your ammo as much as possible in order not to get low and regret that decision. Tip number seven, weapon upgrades. Throughout Exile, both at extraction points and certain random points across the map, you will find shops in which you can buy ammo, guns, and weapon upgrades. Weapon upgrades are an incredibly valuable tool to increase your weapon rarity and therefore its firepower. This is especially helpful if you haven't been particularly lucky and you really need to get a better weapon. Well, if you have enough credits, you can upgrade this. For 350 gold, you can upgrade a green to a blue weapon for 550 coins you can upgrade a blue to an epic weapon this of course is the max weapon skill a purple weapon the highest rarity and the strongest form of that weapon this is a really important thing to use it can save your ass more than once and finally tip number eight this is the one thing i did not realize even after 60 hours of playtime in the game I just didn't realize that, and that is altars. In temples, you can usually find altars where there's a button to press. When you press this button, you sacrifice a part of your health, 20, 25, sometimes 30 health for a random buff that lasts for a minute. Those can be so valuable, especially because it's relatively easy to recuperate your health with a Hilo Cola or similar items, and is a very good trade-off. So this can be a really valuable thing to use. So these were my tips that if you incorporate those into your gameplay, if you haven't already, they will make you more powerful every time you are on exile. They will increase your health, your shields, your movement speed. They will give you the upper hand in engagements and allow you to have a much higher likelihood of surviving, of killing and collecting the kind of trinkets and artifacts and successfully extract them so you can start upgrading your artifacts to legendary as fast as possible and become a kind of terminator on exile. Thank you for watching. I I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, consider checking out my 7 essential tips video because that will give you other basics which, especially if you are a beginner or a newer player, will give you insights that you won't realize in the first few hours to 20 hours of gameplay, which was the case for me. So they'll give you the things you can start to incorporate and improve your gameplay. So thank you for being here with me and I'll see you soon.